Hi, I'm Mike with House on the Mend. And in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Saker 20 volt mini electric chainsaw. So let's get started. If you break it, he will fix it. If you buy it, he will build it. House on the Mend. Now I'm not paid nor sponsored by Saker. Full disclosure, they did send me this unit for free for my independent review. So let's unbox it and see what you get in the package. All right, let's see what's in the box. Got the manual, you got the charge cable. Looks like one battery. The saw itself. And then a wrench for the chain and a little Phillips screwdriver. All right, let's go over some of the features of this mini electric chainsaw. Now, the first thing I noticed is when I put the battery on, the saw is very well balanced and the grip has uh, rubber around it, feels really good. Uh, let's get a little sound of the motor when it's functioning. You press this uh, safety button and then pull the trigger. It's pretty loud, so you're going to want to have uh, hearing protection when you're using it. Now, for left-handed people like me, I would have liked to have seen an ambidextrous um, safety. But the safety button on here is shallow enough that you can either push it and start it with a different finger or even with the uh, center part of your finger push that button in and overcome it so you can still use it as it's meant to uh, with one hand. This uh, top cover here is spring loaded so it will move out of the way as you're going down through a branch and then immediately flop back into place after the cut. That's nice. Um, I like and don't like this carry handle here, this wrist strap. The thing I do like is they were smart enough to not make it long enough where it could get caught or tangled in the chain. However, it really is so small that my hand just barely makes it through and absolutely would not if I was wearing gloves. So to use this wrist strap, I have to put my hand through and then I'll have to don my gloves. Now both the uh, chain cover up top and this little safety handle meant to protect your uh, fingers from brush as you're getting in to make a cut are pretty well made, good robust plastic. The directions say that in the center of the bar, you should be able to pull the chain out two or three millimeters and that is proper tensioning. And as you can see there, I'm easily able to do that. So it's properly tensioned. If it wasn't, however, you would loosen it with this wrench and then on the opposite side right here you would go in with the Phillips screwdriver and tighten or loosen the tension. Once it's at the proper point then you would re-tighten this bolt. The unit comes with one battery. It is sadly a 1.5 amp hour battery. I would have liked to have seen that be a two amp hour battery. I would also like to see some sort of charge indication which this battery does not have. Speaking of charging, the unit doesn't have a cradle. It instead has this jack that plugs into the top of the battery for charging. Now there is absolutely no mention of how to charge, how long to charge, anything like that in the instruction manual. But I'm assuming when we get to that point next that we will have an LED indicator right here letting us know the state of charge. The instruction manual is well written as far as it is grammatically correct for English. Uh, there are a lot of superfluous uh, safety warnings on here that don't apply to this particular chainsaw. Uh, such as always carry it by the front carry handle, which this little guy does not have. So it's clear they cut and pasted some uh, safety warnings on here that don't even apply to this saw. And I would have liked to have seen that uh, be a little bit better thought out and edited. A couple takeaways that do apply is that they do not want you to cut anything more than a four inch branch. 
and they warn you not to over press down and stress the saw when making a cut. Now with the unit turned over this way, we can get a proper reading with my tape measure. And as you can see, the actual cutting length is less than four inches. It's about three and three quarters of an inch. So it makes sense that they don't want you to cut anything more than four inches since the little bar isn't even four inches. All right, let's charge the battery and see how long it takes. Okay, as we can see, the plug is green when nothing is plugged in. I'm assuming it's gonna turn red when we plug it into the jack here and then turn green again once it is uh, fully charged. Let's take a reading. The battery is currently 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 degrees Celsius. Let's plug it in. See how long it takes. All right, a little over an hour and 15 minutes to complete the charge on what is a pretty small battery. The LED indicator does in fact turn green once it's fully charged and we only raised a couple degrees. So one of my biggest complaints with electric chainsaws has been the ridiculously small bar chain oil reservoirs uh, used to fill them up. Now Saker has taken care of that by not even having a bar chain oil reservoir on this little saw. All you have to do is simply lubricate the chain itself. Uh, the only pointer they give is if you're going to be cutting fruit trees, they recommend vegetable oil because mineral oil can damage fruit trees. So with the battery out for safety, we can lubricate the chain. Now I suppose you could just take some WD-40 and just spray it right on there and move the chain around and you'd be good. I'm going to actually use this uh, three-in-one oil, it's got a little bit more viscosity, meaning it's a little thicker. Might hang around on there a little bit more. The directions did say to lubricate the chain in a manner that some of the oil gets into the bar as well. So I kind of interpret that to mean just pouring a little on top, letting it sink down into the bar. And then you can just grab the chain, move it. And it's so small, you only have to do it a few times. All right, I think we're ready. Now, if you're able to support the branch, which is probably gonna be the case for most of your cutting with a chainsaw this small, then you can cut straight through. If, if however, the branch is pretty long and it's going to fall, you're gonna to wanna to make a relief cut underneath first and then come over the top so as not to tear out the uh, tree branch. All right. Eye protection, ear protection, and gloves. Oh, this soft pine is nothing for this little saw. Quick and easy. Well, here's an example of a thicker and longer branch. And so let's demonstrate how we would do that safety undercut to prevent any tear out. I would just come up to it, support the weight as much as I could, turn the saw upside down, give a little relief cut. And now I can come up over the top. That's a heavy branch, so that's the smart way to go with a heavier branch. Now, I always do my pruning in the fall or winter when these trees are dormant. It's better for them to heal. But sometimes it takes them being fully leaved out to see that they're weighed down and pushing against your block wall. And I don't want that. So I'm gonna get in here and make a quick cut on this guy that's encroaching. Much better. Now, speaking of encroaching the walls, this little guy here self-seeded from a tree right over there. And these root balls can get pretty aggressive and do some damage to the foundations that these walls are built upon. So I'm gonna cut this guy down again. I 
think I'm gonna have to dig out this stump or burn it because it keeps growing back. Well, I just had to switch out the battery on that camera, but not this little chainsaw, it's still going. All right, here's another example of a tree. I love this green ash tree in our backyard and I prune it pretty regularly so that I can walk underneath it. I'm six feet tall, but when it gets fully leaved up, it gets weighted down and now it's an obstruction. So time to make a quick little cut right here. Now this guy, I think I can support. So no relief cut. I'm just gonna get in here and do it real quick. There we go. Ah, much better. Well, here in Las Vegas, it gets ridiculously windy. Today is no exception, it's early in the morning and already we got a breeze going, but this poor little branch here was the victim of our last windstorm. So I'm gonna come back here and cut it back. There we go. Pretty respectable burn pile. Now in the past, I've always used a sawzall to trim my palm trees, but a sawzall is really meant to be used with two hands, whereas this little unit is meant to be used with one hand. So let's see how we do with it. Well, you definitely want to approach it the opposite direction so that the, uh, the motor here is facing on the outside. That'll, otherwise it obstructs your ability to cut. So as you'd expect, it had absolutely no problem trimming up this little palm tree. I planted this little ash tree here at the Arizona house, but sadly it died. So rather than dig up the root ball and everything, I think I'll just try cutting it off. Easy. This is African sumac, an extremely hard wood. Check out this video link if you want to see how much the Black & Decker and Ryobi electric chainsaws struggled to cut this wood. This is going to be a good cage match style test on how this little saw cuts through hard woods. Now, uh, same battery, first charge. I did re-lubricate the chain because I don't want to burn this poor guy up on this nasty wood, but let's see if it can handle it. You heard it struggling, but it made it through. That is impressive. Well, I haven't had to clean this chain guard out even once. The closest thing to any debris being stuck in there is this little bit of wood. Well, we just weren't able to wear this little battery out, but let's see how long it takes to recharge after a full day's cutting. Well, only 40 minutes. That's half the time of the original charge. Absolutely no change in temperature. Well, that's my review of this little Saker Mini electric chainsaw. And I'll tell you, I am very impressed. A full day's cutting at two different houses, all on one battery charge. So the build quality, battery life, and the power are all exceptional. And due to that, I would have absolutely no reservations recommending it to you for home use. 
So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithms to start suggesting it to more viewers like you. Also, please consider subscribing. I work really hard to put out good quality content and there's more videos to come. I'm gonna leave a link to this saw in the description below. Full disclosure, that's an Amazon affiliate link. So if you click on it and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month that helps to justify the time and money it takes to set up and do these videos. Until next time, thank you for watching. Now, just because he's really small, I'm not going to tolerate any bullying of the new guy. <laughs>